I thought I'd start with Michael Dorsey, who was actually one of the first people that we um, you know, spoke with for the film. And um, you know, what, what's the latest report, Michael? I know you wrote a poem. You want to you read your, uh, your poem that you wrote for the event? Yeah, thank you all. Um, you know, what's a professor to do with two filmmakers on right and left and with a DJ watching over and with the keeper of the ideas of one of the world's sort of luminaries of the past century? Uh, what's a professor to do other than uh, write a poem? Of course, I could bore you with an infinity of details about the nature of climate negotiations, uh, but I decided to take the route of putting uh, some thoughts, some framing thoughts together in some lines with, of course, all the apologies and respect due to C. or Clement C. Moore. Uh, and if you know that name, you know uh, what the title is going to be. At the end of the year, we're going to be back uh, in the negotiations. Uh, this time we'll be in a place a little bit warmer than Copenhagen and a little bit warmer than Poland two years ago. We'll be in Cancun. Um, so, of course, the poem is, "'Twas the night before Cancun." Twas the night before Cancun. Twas the night before the conference in Cancun and all through the White House. Not a climate change program was in place. Not even a voluntary one. Joe hung by Barry's side in despair, with hopes that a flexible market miracle would soon be there. The negotiators were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of clean development mechanisms and joint implementation danced in their heads. Rewinding this tale to the present moment, in the beginning swelter of one of the hottest recorded summers, I suddenly awoke looking in on the White House where there was such a clatter. And as I sprang from my slumber to see what was the matter, what to my wondering eyes should appear but the ruler of rivals, compared to old Abe, he stood in the door with something curiously nuclear. I knew he was the man. What was in his hand? Ah, the vocal Georgia nuclear power plant expansion plan. I double rubbed my weary eyes. His resume glowed with senatorial experience so progressively rare. I was even given, I was even there when he spun, spun great odes in Copenhagen with no trace of the former skeptic's flair. More rapid than eagles came his mantras and major emitters meetings. They came and he smiled and muttered and called them by name. On voluntary mechanism, on China and India before me, on quasi-meaningless inquiry, on new Kyoto Treaty with just me and the EU elite, on Podesta, on Browner, onward freeward, free permits for big oil and electricity, I need you to compete. His eyes are like suns, his fingers nimble and lean from weekends and nights in front of a NORAD video game screen. A wink of his eye and a twitch of his head soon let me know I had much to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, turning diplomats into drones, spinning in his giant oval with a curious body jerk. He laid not a finger upon a meaningful treaty, and so islands disappeared and hurricanes never retreated. No agreements last December were updated. Indeed, in many minds, the treaty was deleted. And to boot, no inquiries inquired and no new protocol completed. In the end, Copenhagen, that became Copenhagen, was Nopenhagen. He backed the American Power Act, and funds were funneled keeping coal-fired power plants right on track. With nary a hope that all had gone well when it was boldly clear that the opposite was true. The Cook system was finished, the tests were fraudulently concluded, the polluters' last changes were even included, and the market makers colluded. Around a fire, a one-tie-suited member in a Gucci-down lawyer clown, an nrdc -er and an edf -er. both members of the great green gang, exclaimed and then claimed with a snarl and a taunt, this is not what I asked for, nor what I want. And then, a little climate justice mouse roared a Bob Marley tune. We are the small axe, and we're going to cut you down. The beginning. That's the framework. <laughs> Now, 
That's the framework where we sit. Without going into all the details, we can take them up in questions, the details of what a clean development mechanism is, what joint implementation means, what the 16th Conference of the Parties in Cancun will be about. With all, all those details, those sort of curiously academic scholarly footnotes that we can get in into a question and answer period, the outlook, the march towards the negotiations is pretty grim. And so a big burden is being hoisted upon the shoulders of individuals to keep the pressure on governments, to keep the pressure on industry, to keep the pressure on those that are right now as we speak working out the draft of the 978 pages of the American Power Act that I'm going to negotiate, that I'm going to debate down at Harvard uh, this Thursday. And the outlook in that, in that draft that's being worked out on the Hill isn't really good. And I think that's a way of opening a conversation on this panel and with all of you to think about your role as citizens, your relationship to government, your role not as consumers, not as individuals, not as people purchasing items in an infinity of booths that I couldn't even walk to the end to just minutes ago, but really your role in building a new kind of polity, a green polity, a polity that's informed. And that's the kind of the point at which I want to open the conversation with all of you to get into the details of what's required. Um, and I think the challenge is particularly great here in this country because there's a sense that, oh, those people that we elected, they're working this out. When the reality is, in the fine print and in the details, they're not. And actually, it's much worse than they're working it out. Actually, they're creating something that will really compromise ecosystems, will compromise the climate system, and compromise other systems. And that fact is doubly dangerous because some people will think, oh, they're working it out, when actually they're making something that's worse, that compels people to turn the other way because they think incorrectly that things are being worked out. So that's where we should begin the discussion. We need to have the discussion from that point because there is a role that individuals can play, that social movements are playing. They're playing them in this country, they're playing them abroad. They're putting together responses to this process and they've been doing so in places as distant as Cochabamba, Bolivia, where colleagues and I were just uh, the week before last, and bringing those processes from social movements, from individuals, from progressive organizations into debates that are trying to change the negotiations and trying to move us to a place where we can get out of the, the current crisis that we're facing. So that's where I want to begin the conversation with you all. Thank you. Thank you.